Welcome to another edition of Nature's Glory Cabin Off-Road. Today we're going to be back in the backcountry byway again, uh, just outside of Slade, Kentucky, and we're going to be doing Spa's Creek today. Um, I've done this before, and we also did a, this is the third trail we did on this day. We actually did four. The fourth one we had done before. If you use your GPS to get to Spa's Creek, it'll get you all the way to the end where the actual trail starts. It's actually gravel road at this point. So this turnaround here is where most people turn around that don't want to do the uh, actual trail. So we're gonna move on down through here and uh, things are pretty wet. It had rained some more um, since the last time I had done this trail, but it's not real deep. Um, depending on conditions, it can be deeper or muddier. Um, you should always keep track and might wanna bring a chainsaw or something you can cut limbs with if they fall over because sometimes they do and um, if nobody's been on the trail in a while you may need to clear so you can get through here we meet a few folks on some four-wheelers doing the trail in the other direction and we're going to work through this mud hole this one isn't as deep as you think it is if you've noticed on the tires it looks like it's four or five inches deep just about up to the rim that's what that left front wheel video is for some of them are deeper than others i'll speed this up at some point it took us about an hour to do this i sped it up and we got a little over 20 minutes this is just a really muddy road very little of it is uh much over a uh, i don't know a two or a three I have somebody with me on this trip i'm doing four high for the most part i didn't use any lockers or anything i have a limited slip the guy with me has got a stock sahara uh, 2014 JKU and uh, I didn't want to use any extra equipment to make sure I could get through it and he could too. It's being called Spa's Creek we have several creek crossings that we go through and we'll just continue on here and like I said I've got it sped up definitely didn't drive this fast most of the time I didn't get over 10 miles an hour most of the time probably not over five it's only a couple of mile long trail. This goes in this direction. We went from the Slade side over towards the uh, Menifee County side. So uh, you go from uh, Powell County to Menifee County, Frenchburg. That's where the cabin is in Frenchburg. Let me zip along through here and every other mud hole here. It's some pretty scenery, mostly in the summertime. Lots of trees, lots of greenery. This time of year, if you like to watch the uh, creeks and stuff on the side, they don't look too bad. I probably hesitated a second there and put it in a four high probably. Or maybe I was waiting for him to catch up. I always try to keep your uh, people in sight. If you're the leader, you gotta make sure the next person behind you can see you and you can see them. You don't wanna lose them. Something could happen, something could break. If you're in the middle of the pack, make sure you can see the uh, vehicle in front of you and the vehicle behind you. I'm talking constantly because I've been on this before. He hadn't, so I'm explaining to him some of the things and whether it should stay right or left and pointing out washouts where there are some. Um, like I said, changing conditions. What looks like a two or so today, it could be a four if we have a big storm and have a bunch of washouts. Now here you'll come to places, several of these, where you get to make a decision. Do you wanna go left or right? I went right, obviously, here. You choose what you wanna do. Some of them um, are easier than others, and sometimes the bypass is worse than the actual trail. I paused again for a second. And another little creek crossing. A little washout there on the right. You gotta keep an eye out for those so you don't drop over. I actually stopped longer than that showed because I've got it sped up. Again, I'm waiting on him to cross these little water obstacles and making sure he's staying close. Look, you see all this deadfall laying around. A lot of them have been chainsawed, so they have fallen across the trail and somebody has cut them back. These are managed by um, four-wheel drive club. Here's another one where you gotta decide where you wanna go left or right. Again, I chose right on this one. 
you decide what's easiest for you. I have some recovery gear, I have a winch, I have some other straps and things with me, so um, sometimes you can get yourself out if you have equipment with you. I wouldn't do these alone simply because, let's say you break. There's another one where I went to the right instead of the left. There is virtually no cell signal back in here. You would have to walk to the top of one of these hills or mountains to get a signal. So you won't be calling anybody from back here. Yeah, this one here, I stayed left on this one. Looks like there was a little bit there to the right. Again, this is private property on both sides of this road. So uh, you want to stay off of everybody's property. No camping, obviously. But it's some pretty country. Now here's a tree that has fallen down. And this is a low uh, clearance. Uh, we've had some lifted four-wheel drive trucks that couldn't make that. So depending on how high you are, if you've got a rooftop tent or something, you might want to think twice about it. As eventually, at some point, that tree is going to fall. And somebody's going to have to cut it up and get it out of the way. Continuing on, there's a whole bunch of deadfalls been cut back right there. I'll put some music here and there in these places where I'm not talking. And most of these aren't very deep. There's a little washout there on the left. I don't know if you saw that or not. Next time it rains, it could get worse. Never can tell sometimes on how deep these water holes are, so you should approach them carefully and make sure. Now in this part of the country, there's a pretty good rock bottom and everything. You don't have a lot of uh, deep mud around here because there's so much rock. There's a close rock there to your side. However, some of them can be pretty deep. I've got a couple of them in here that I think are deeper, and we'll, when we get there, I'll uh, make sure I point them out. There ain't no going around these. This one here was, I don't know, probably six inches, eight inches deep. And then we're crossing the creek again. There's a two ways on this one, if you notice there. Again, I stayed to the right. We had just come off of uh, Pumpkin Hollow, went to had lunch at La Cabana, and heading back, we decided to take Spa's Creek because we started in Menifee County. There's uh, two other videos out there. There's uh, Johnson Branch and the uh, Pumpkin Hollow that go along with this. They were done on the same day, 12-22, excuse me, 12-10-2022. <clears throat> See the creek off to the left. I decided it was easier to go through it than go off camber. And pretty deep one here. Look at that. That one's uh, that's about halfway up the tire, which would make it about 16 inches. I'm running 33s and a three and a quarter inch rough country lift. There's another one a little deeper, not too deep. Again, uh, stock any stock uh, Jeep or Bronco or similar should be able to do this with just a little bit of clearance. There's no really any place to bang any skid plates on this. There's one spot, we'll point that out, it's toward the end. But between here and there we've got still lots of mud and water. Most likely go over in a mud hole, come out of it a little bit, and right back in another one. Here's the creek crossing again. Oh, we met a bunch of Broncos here. They pulled out of the way, wave at them, and they, uh, I don't know what happened to them. I thought they were going on the trail, but they never came up behind us, so I don't know what they did.
moving right along. Again, uh, changing conditions can change in a moment. Uh, I didn't do this trail on uh, New Year's Eve because I had heard there was a tree down. I had forgotten my chainsaw, so I had heard it was a tree down, so I didn't uh, bother with it. I went the other direction on Pumpkin Hollow, which was a little more challenging because it was wetter. And I got a video on that coming up after I get it edited, it'll probably be a week or so. Lots of water, but none of it very deep. If you'll notice on some of those bypasses, they're a little muddier. That's because they hadn't been rode down enough to get to the bottom and get to the rock. That very first one that I talked about going left or right, uh, the left one was muddier. Here's another one that has two ways up. I don't think it matters which one you take on these. Now this here, I pulled up to this and thought about going around it to the left, but if you notice I pulled up there and look at all those mud and ruts and that little tree. I decided I didn't want to do that, so I backed up and uh, chose to go through the water. Left to the right. There's one the further one to the right that looked a little deeper. This is a little shorter one, and it's about halfway up the tire, so it wasn't as bad as it kind of looked like. Again. If you don't know how deep something is, you might want to get out and find you a stick or something and try to see how deep something is. Sometimes they'll be, put you off camber. Because you can't see the bottom of a mud hole. There's a little uh, bypass it looked like to the right went around and came in here. Again, I stayed right. Seems like I stay right most of the time. Hope you hang around and watch the whole thing because if you want to uh, do this trail sometime, uh, this is a pretty good representation of the whole trail. Again, looks like I wanted to go through the water. I was spending time in the water on this day. And, this one's a all right. This is a this one's a good 16 inches deep here. This is the deepest hole that we went through. I believe I made a short about that. If you go to the Nature's Glory Cabin channel, you'll see all of these videos as well as uh, some about the cabin and some light hiking we do. And the cabin also has a Facebook page, and the cabin's available to rent when uh, we're not using it. We don't. Uh, try to make a ton of money on it. We try to pay the bills the rest of the time we use it. And crossing the creek again. What's that been four or five times that I said? I guess we're probably close to two thirds, three quarters away through the trail now. Again, it took us about an hour Depending on how big your group is, the bigger the group, you tend to take a little longer because you're making sure everybody can stay up. We have GMRS radios. We're talking to each other all the way through here. GMRS is becoming the standard. I know CB used to be, but um, it seems to be all the big rides now are now using GMRS. Notice that one. You can go off to the right also. Sometimes you get a little close to these trees, so you gotta pay attention so that you don't uh, hit one of them. There's another one, you go left or right. A lot of these so-called bypasses. Some trails have more than others. Oh, I went left that time for the water instead of right. been about a month and a half since I did this trail so you know as I narrate it and I'm watching I can 
pay more attention to detail when you're driving and you're just trying to make sure that you do everything right. There's a little washout there to the right. I stayed to the left. Those washouts get bigger by the time I go back again. It may be nearly impassable. I've had a couple of spots like that. This is the most popular place in the area. Um, Daniel Boone Backcountry Byway is to ride on. I've got some easy rides that I have uh, recorded also, and I'm gonna go back and do a couple more. It's a big thing for, it's a big rock climbing country too. And you can see we're starting to go up a little now. See the little rock formations off to the side. the creek one more time. So if you notice there, there is the uh, marker for the Danny Boone Backcountry Byway. Little white squares on trees to make sure you know you're still on the trail. I must be changing gears or waiting on my trailer. There is a place in this that uh, we're going to come up on shortly that can be a waterfall if, it's, if there's enough rain. I believe this is it right here. Um, if you look ahead, you, there can be a waterfall there. We're going to turn right. But the waterfall will be right in front of us if there's enough water. We're going to turn right and go up this chute, and then there's a rock shelf to climb. It's a 10 to 12 inch shelf, and it's not undercut, but it's pretty well straight up. And I didn't have any trouble, and neither did the uh, stock JK behind me. That's the only rock climbing, so to speak, on this trail. There's some rocky stuff, you know, as we go up. You'll see some. And we're moving right along. There's a fairly good sized rock there. Now, if it was me and not somebody behind me trying to pick a way sometimes I'm picking a way that'd be easier for him like that particular rock I might have gone to the right and left my left front wheel uh, do a little flexion on that rock any other time most all of these trails start out with some pretty easy stuff and then get a little tougher after you get back off the road. They have an inhabited area on each end of them a lot of times. And then uh, you get to the end. This is a fairly deep spot here. I had forgotten about this one. The water wasn't that deep, but it kind of will drop off on the front end of it. Tell me what you think of this picture-in-a-picture -picture stuff. The uh, other one I did had the rear camera, and it was a cheapy camera, and I used it, and it did okay. I've since bought another GoPro, and I'm hoping that that'll make the uh, rear video a little better, and I can change batteries. The other one was only good for like an hour or two, and uh, I wasn't able to recharge it or change its batteries. So picture-in-a-picture, -picture. this is the left front wheel. The other one has left front wheel and uh, the rear I put up in the right uh, corner. Tell me what you think of this stuff. I'm curious to know what you think. Too much, too little, about right. A few rocks here and there. If you notice, we're going up now. Since these cameras have uh, stabilization, about the only way you can tell um, the way the terrain is by watching how the hood bounces around. Again, I sped this up. Looks like I'm going 25 or 30 in a knot. And we're coming close to the end, official end of the trail, I believe, here pretty soon. Yeah, there it is, the sign to the left. We're on the back side of it. That's the marker for the official beginning end of the trail for the Daniel Boone Backcountry Byway. We're gonna go here, we're gonna turn right, and uh, there's actually two of these little 
trails. You can take either one of the two to the right. Don't go straight. You won't be on it. The other one to the right you see comes right back to this trail. And we go straight on up the hill here. And this is pretty smooth from here on out. Again, private property on both sides, so uh, don't trespass. rocks on that left side there you can see and here we're going to turn left down the hill I slowed it down here uh, we don't go straight on we go left and down the hill and watch for the backcountry byway if you see the white spot on that tree that's the marker and here we're up at the end. Hope everybody's enjoyed it. Um, if you have, please like and subscribe. Um, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.